Okay, so here we are. He has finished. Actually, I put two iteration uh, to see because it was going much quicker uh, without the screen recording. Okay, you see, even here you get uh, RW for EVINF, end of uh, maximum entropy fit uh, by EVINF, is actually quite high. So that is uh, is not really going too well. Okay, and also the final R is actually, I like it a little bit better because you get the maximum over here, but it's still not perfect. Uh, one thing we can notice is actually, if you see in the background, the background is still changing because with the sample going in and out of the beam, okay, also the background is, is affected. So we will see how to deal uh, with that one. And probably this one is affecting more even than uh, not having the correct background for every pattern, affecting more even with the extraction. Uh, respect to, for example, the harmonic in this case. So let's see, in this case, texture plot, uh, just to see, we take the same, okay, now we go a little bit quicker, even if it's uh, slower to compute the pole figure, so only 101, so reconstructed intensities here, okay, so pole figure computation, and here we are, okay? So it's nearly 45 and 2, so it's similar to the harmonic, but we get uh, quite different results. So we have more centered there, okay? Respect to the harmonic in this case. And uh, if we check the experimental intensity, means the extracted one, let's see. Oh, I closed the other. I should have keep open to to just uh, check uh, the two. Okay, so you see from the extraction that is not too nice. There is something. Well, this is because it's correlating a bit. Uh, it's not perfect the correction for the. Uh, probably is not perfect the correction for the sample uh, displacement. Okay, well, the, how to compute uh, the variation in intensity due to the, to the precession of the sample is actually an approximation because I don't compute also the absorption in that case, uh, but I only compute based on how much volume is in and out, uh, so, so I'm not doing a perfect uh, correction. It is uh, better than not doing it, but it's not perfect. Normally it's better to do, to just align better the sample. So this one is affecting the extracted pole figure and the even computation, okay? Okay, now we close here, okay? And if we want to get a better fit for the, for the background with the different Okay, you can check here probably that some are, if you go to individual plotting, some maybe have a better fit or some are too low. Oh, you see, yeah, if you go to one fit by one, still, okay, there is uh, the shift of the peak uh, due to the, that's, uh, is not actually everything perfect right, the intensity still, okay, can be improved. Now, let's see, if you want to improve the background here, okay, you go to here, and maybe we can decide not to use uh, uh, the polynomial background, or eta, so let's select here all of them, remove, and we use uh, the interpolation, so we see how it's working. The so we decide to interpolate the background. We the interval for the interpolation in point. I prefer to set it myself. Uh, so not the default. So I will use it uh, here 
Okay, these are not too many points, so let's say I put every 150 data points. So we'll put an interpolation point every 150, and then we'll do some iteration to get uh, the, the point uh, in a more correct position where are the minima, not uh, over the top. Okay, and uh, so it will set up also different point for a pattern that have a different range. Okay, so let's, okay, now it's done. Oh, we go to general, and okay, I click. Let's wait for the refresh, okay. Uh, we are ready. Uh, no, I click over here until this one will go to blue. Uh, it's still refreshing the images, okay. So now I just compute. So the first time you put the interpolation back on, we just compute pattern. He will just compute directly the first interpolation. Interpolation is going on the residual. And it will compute also where to put the point. Then we can check where the points are. And if you like, you can move or edit the point, uh, change the position. Actually, when you have uh, more than 1,000 files, you don't want to do them one by one. Okay, so let's hope uh, the program choose uh, correctly the point. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, only one pattern or a few patterns, then you can manually uh, remove some of the points, add uh, another, other, okay, etc. And on the new version, the drawing, the graphical routine to do it uh, graphically has been changed completely, so it's much more easy to do. There are no points disappearing, reappearing, so no refresh. Okay, so let's wait for the computation. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. While the comp still the computation is long because uh, I still have the when there is the screen recording, is taking nearly I uh, so three times longer than what it normally does, even more. Okay. Now. Let's wait for the refresh. The RW is a little bit better than before, but hasn't done any iteration to the file. And you see that now we have uh, is reproducing the background going up and down. Okay, so it's a little bit better the background here. Let's see here we can see the overall. Then we can check uh, one by one the background. You you can see here how is uh, much better. Well, the, in any case, the background is correlated to the intensity, so you should run at least some iteration then. You should run some iteration to get a, a better fitting of the intensity. Okay, let's end. The other is uh, to reduce, uh, we, have, we have some impurity also in this sample. So let's go to check uh, here, okay, we have to check uh, the, the interpolation background point by point. So let's go to one of the longer. Oh, well, we can check uh, one of the shorter. Okay. So view. And so if you want to see tool, uh, edit interpolation background point. So here we have only two of them. So you see he was choosing one there and one there. Okay. Let's go to one, let's hope this one is longer. Oh, no, no, we are still uh, over there. So let's go over here. Now we should have, uh, oh, this is nearly, well, let's see here. Edit interpolated background point. Okay, so you see here is quite good. Okay, but here, okay, probably the point was chosen, was not able to, it was going to the minimum here, but not going over. So you want to put maybe there that point. So you go here, remove the point. And then we had here. So you click on the right mouse button. Okay. Add background point there. Also here, maybe you don't want really there. We want to put maybe here is better. Okay. 
and also here was going on the minimum but between the two peak remove uh, add background pop okay sometimes okay the one thing is uh, do not worry if they are over here instead of here because uh, actually Maud is doing the interpolation on the residual so even if you choose one point on the peak it will work anyway will not interpolate uh, the background over here okay if you want to see option well if you want to plot background you can check where the background is it really is so you see the background is going over here right so here in reality was taking the background a little bit too low the point remember was over here okay here we need to again put uh, another point well we have to close and reopen okay let's uh, now for example choose uh, one of these okay we have the background tool Edit interpolate back. Okay, so yeah, you see, so this point here, well, in this case, for this one, it was going over here because, and you see, it is going a little bit down, but uh, it is not taking up here, so you should not to worry about this. One moment, please. Sandra, e ti posso richiamare, cioè mi puoi chiamare tra dieci minuti? Ok, bene, ciao. Ok, so, but if you want to change the way it change, try to change, uh, to redo the interpolation, changing the sampling point. So instead of every 150 you choose a little bit longer or you just trust that okay so let's go to one of the longest here eta is minus five let's go to one with eta zero should be the longest okay here it is with eta zero view okay let's see edit interpolated background point Okay, you see here was chosen differently. So maybe you want to add one there, okay. Remove this one, okay, add over there. But okay, in the case of uh, 1000 pattern, we don't care. You see the background was uh, going quite well, okay. You just check, uh, plot the background, okay, with the option, remember, here, okay plot background okay you don't and so you change the interpolation point only if the background is not going too well okay so let's see here we have finished with this one you save okay or whatever you want now I want to see uh, has uh, on this one is not the best uh, sample for uh, texture okay because we needed a little bit more point uh, different chi okay uh, let's uh, load the one analysis in which uh, we have some texture okay clear texture okay and uh, going quickly as this one was already prepared for the so here we have also the data the original data was some images and uh, there were five images okay in transmission so normal the it was an image plate normal to the to the beam okay in transmission and uh, the sample was uh, collected tilting the sample at zero minus 20 minus 40 20 40 so let's go in 2d so so we have uh, in this way tilting the sample Okay, you see we get uh, different uh, intensity. You just check this line here, how the intensity is changing with the texture uh, rotating the sample. So we have a uh, uh, good coverage in this case. Uh, okay, if you want to check, uh, we go to graphic texture plot. Uh, 
we go, we select one peak, for example the 111 is the first one here, and we check the pole figure coverage to see uh, how, what, how the point are measured over a pole figure. Okay. What we get here? Is it? Uh, oh, right. Yeah, we have to run uh, at least one to get it. Okay. So let's. Uh, ah, right. We we have first. Uh, we want to set uh, the model. Okay. So here we can use evinf. Okay. Option. Let's see. We can use, uh, well, the texture is quite sharp, so let's go to the 5 degree step. We leave uh, the default, 0, 0 here. We use all the peaks, okay? Symmetry none, okay, iteration. So the rest should already be set up. And if you want to do, well, we actually run okay so it's like uh, you do the analysis without the texture up to the point uh, no, using the normal analysis yeah you saw uh, five extraction so five times running the extraction because uh, we had five data set well you saw how also how to set up the when you have uh, multiple image and with a different tilting. You, you want to do that, uh, put the, every image in a different one, so if you want to check one image by one, or for example if you don't have the same exposure time for each image, okay, so the intensity is changing, or if with the tilting you get a different, uh, for example, uh, instrument broadening or similar stuff, so you put in a different data set and you you can set up uh, different instrument condition for each uh, image. If you have the same condition for each image then you don't care you put all the images in the same data set as we were doing for D19 before. Okay so you see here is starting to get some texture okay this is the first I didn't check actually exactly what parameter were refined. Okay, we hope uh, we're set the correct parameter to refine. Then, well, we actually do only a couple of iterations. Okay, then here is, let's see, you see the RW is 3, 3%. That is, means uh, it is very good. So we have a good uh, ODF actually. And you see yeah, the intensity, for example, in this case, which data set was it? The last I select, uh, we have uh, a good uh, reproduction of the how the intensity is changing along uh, the ring. So along it here, the different pattern. So well, this is quite simple. We have a number of, uh, so we have actually, this is 0, 20, 36 patterns, so it was integrated every 10 degree in eta. So 36 pattern and five data, five uh, images. So this means uh, 180 data set total. So which one? This was the zero, this is the minus 20, okay, you see 40, 40, 20, okay, everything is reproduced well, at the end the RW is 14 because we have a lot of data file, but the ODF is 2.5, so it should be quite well. Now let's go to texture plot, now we can plot, uh, so you want to plot first. Oh uh, no, we just plot uh, 111, 200, 220, okay? And, uh, well, let's do a quick plot. Uh, 
So we, from the ODF we have uh, obtained it, we actually recompute re the pole figure, okay, to, okay, so you see, this is actually the text. So in a case like this one is 13, it's probably better to plot in log scale. If you, if you go for publication and color is not admitted, plot in gray shade. Do not convert color, do not uh, submit color for figure if it is then printed in gray shade. You can change the minimum and max here if you want to set up certain limit or when you want to compare different pole figure, always use the same minimum max, okay? Uh, so you can compare them. Okay, so you see better there are these four pole here. If we want to now experimental intensity, okay? So in the experimental intensity you see also where actually we we have the coverage. So the coverage you see was only over certain part, the certain uh, central part. Okay, on the border here is just interpret. Uh, we actually cover point uh, to produce this figure. Actually, Maud is interpolating outside the measured measured point, and so you get uh, some intensity going up uh, here. Okay. And let's see now, the coverage should work now, okay? This is the coverage. So you see here, one, two, three, four, five. The five actually images. So one image is covered in the center only, uh, then here, here, and here. So this is how the images are covering with the different minus 40, minus 20, zero, plus 20, plus 40. Okay, so these are really the measured point. If you want a, a better coverage, you should maybe integrate every five degree the, the image to get more point here, or you should do more tilting. Instead of every 20, every five degree or 10 degree to get also point inside over here. Okay. That's all. And as finished.